All right, Wheels and Tone back on this edition of Trailblazers Courtside as uh, we have an opportunity now to visit with uh, one of the trusted members of Terry Stott's coaching staff. That would be Blazer assistant David Vanderpool. And, uh, Coach, we were mentioning very odd uh, during this uh, first half of the season for you guys to have a couple of days off in between games uh, to uh, get some rest, get some work in. How did you spend the last two days uh, coming off that uh, glorious victory over the Thunder on Sunday? Well, I mean, you know, obviously we still have to continue to prepare, continue to grow, so – it is a day off, I guess, traditionally, and guys that, that needed rest, that needed certain things for their bodies, got a chance to just kind of take care of their bodies and take care of some of those things. And, and other guys just continue to work and continue to try to grow. So it's a day off for some and not so much a day off for others and for the, for the coaches and for the for people that work every single day like you guys. It, it wasn't a day off. I don't know which one of us guys you think works every single day, Coach, but I appreciate it. <laughs> but uh, I'll say thank you for both of us. A, 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 a great run of basketball for the team, you know, the last 10 to 12 days. Coach, I know the three-game losing streak, streak was a little bit disappointing, but you get the big victory versus Oklahoma City the other night. Do you feel like the team is at a pivot point in the season where things are starting to come together more for you? Well, you like to try to build on every situation that you can, and getting the, getting the win like the one that we got against Oklahoma City was good. Uh, and more than anything, it's actually the way that we played and some of the things that we did through the course of the game that we we just really want to continue to build upon it and, and try to make the most out of those things and and have something for the guys to kind of hold on and gravitate towards more than some of the other things and some of the slip ups in those other situations. So, for us, every every victory small albeit may you know it's something that could could be something that our guys kind of grasp onto and really really take hold to and, and, and get better at which which are things that'll, that'll make us hopefully have more victories down the stretch since he got here, I don't think any one of the coaches has been as close uh, to Damian as, as you have, and uh, that's not just in a basketball sense, but also in a personal sense, getting to know him and uh, getting to spend uh, time with him, seeing him mature as a person and as a basketball player. When you see something like what happened on Sunday night, do you get to the point now where nothing he ever does in a game uh, can surprise you anymore? <laughs> Well, I mean, you know, honestly, that was still surprising. I think, I mean, you know, scoring, I don't know, 17 points in three minutes was, was a lot. And uh, a lot of the, a lot of the shots that he made, I've seen him make some, some of those similar type of shots that it's just in the moment, in the, in the heat of the moment, in the heat of the battle. You know, once he sees the ball go in, I, I, I sometimes think any, anything is possible. And, uh, surprising, I don't know how, how much – of a surprise it actually was because, again, some of the things we do working out, some of the shots he makes when we're doing some things one-on-one -on -one and some things with some other competition that we have going on, he makes some crazy shots that are really tough that, you know, it's the reason why he's so special. But for him, just, just embracing the moment, embracing the opportunity and the situation where basically we needed him to kind of go in the phone booth and come out with his cape on and do, do some of the things that he's capable of doing and for him be, being able and having a chance to, to really step up in that moment in that situation and, and taking hold of it and, and taking grasp of it and just kind of taking over the game is something that we, we needed from him and it was it was great and, and special another special moment for him to 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 try to build upon. You know, Coach, a lot of attention, obviously, is fakes is uh, placed on Dame and, and as well as should be. But there are other guys that are starting to find the rhythm. Uh, in particular, the guy that stands out to me is Al Farouk Aminu. When I look at the way he's playing right now, uh, not just the best basketball of this season, but maybe the best, most consistent basketball of his career. Well, he's been he's been asked to do a lot of things that that he has never been asked to do throughout the course of his career. So it's always going to be an adjustment for anybody stepping into a role like that. Very rarely do you have guys step in and and like a CJ situation and just kind of blow it out of the water. So for for uh, for, for Chief, uh, he, he's really been been finding his spots and, and trying to find his niche and, and how he can really help this team become successful. And I think he's getting a, a better feel for a lot of different things, along with our system and some of the things that we have in place. Just playing with the guys and understanding the things they like, the things they need. Uh, one of the things that he, ha he has to continue to, to grow and stay consistent with is his defense and being a defender out there for us, being long, being active, uh, cutting to the basket, making all those other types of plays that 
he's actually capable of because some of our guys, again, don't have the athleticism or the length and, and the ability that he has. So we have so, so many different guys that are very unique in their own roles or own situations. And being a star in your role is important for our team. You mentioned CJ, and uh, he almost gets a little defensive when uh, the topic comes up about uh, being uh, the prime candidate for the most improved player award in the NBA uh, because uh, he says it really comes down to just getting an opportunity, which uh, he has gotten this season and has taken full advantage of that. Uh, where have you seen his growth, and has anything that he has done so far this season surprised you at all in terms of how fast he's become easily the number two scorer on this team and one of the best in the entire league? Well, I mean, CJ – CJ, honestly, through the course of, of his time in Portland, he's been preparing. Um, I, I know, you know, the, the work that he does in the summer, uh, the, stuff, the stuff that he's done together in the summer. He came to Toronto this past summer, as a matter of fact, and we did some work there. He worked with Steve Nash for a little bit there, but he, he's very hungry and thirsty, thirsty and hungry for knowledge and for, for improvement. And I think that's the thing that a lot of people don't get a chance to really see or or understand about CJ is that he really works very hard. So he's been preparing for this opportunity for a long time. And he had minor setbacks throughout the course of his career so far with injuries with his foot and with his finger um, in successive years. So that has, has been a, a deterrent for him, but he's never wavered as far as his work ethic and as far as preparation. So for him, you know, being prepared is something I think that he, he relishes in, in being prepared so that when those opportunities present themselves, he's ready to, to take hold of them. And he's done nothing short of that this season. We, we He and I talked about, uh, before the season started, talked about, uh, this, you know, most improved situation. And, you know, we know that, know that that's something that um, that the the media especially will be, you know, and, and fans alike will look at him in that light just because of him not having played as much throughout the course of his career and played a little bit here and there and just making that type of jump as far as his points per game average. But, you know, for him, I, I think he, he looks at it like he's always been capable, hasn't really uh, had opportunity and not, not lack of opportunity because of playing time, but lack of opportunity because of other things, because of being injured, because of having to play behind such great players as, as Wes Matthews and Nicholas Batum. You know, it's it's a lot of different reasons and variables. And I think sometimes when he talks about not having the opportunity, people take it, you know, a little bit the wrong way. But CJ just has is, is, is been preparing for this moment for a really long time. And, I mean, he expects that he should win most improved player. I mean, I think he, you know, as far as people look, people see, he has been the most improved player. Coach, I got to ask, because, you know, as a, as a former player and, and you being in that same position, you know, we all have – egos and we all believe we could do certain things when we played and sometimes you know I'll be watching the game and I'll say to myself man if, when I was playing I would have done this against that guy uh, defensively right. or I would have done this I tell you what when I watch CJ play all I can think is I'm glad I'm retired because he does things <laughs> with the ball that are special <laughs> yeah, he he, uh, he he's, he's really really special and it's, it has taken again a lot of work and a lot of time and you know a lot of time watching film, a lot of time breaking things down and trying to understand the speed of the game, the, the nuances, how to move, movements he can make and get away with, so on and so forth. In those first few years, sometimes CJ would make a move and we used to joke. I used to joke with him all the time about he was, I told him he was the best, he made the best moves that were accidental moves where he would fall down or be stumbling, lose the ball, pick it up, turn around and shoot a fadeaway jump shot to make it in. And, he, he had trouble with his footing his first his first few years, just staying on his feet when he tried to make some of those moves. And again, getting his feet underneath him and, and learning, you know, certain things about the game as, as the years have progressed has been something that he's grasped hold of, and he, he's tried to just continually get better. Staying with the uh, guard line and uh, improved players, a guy that uh, you as a coaching staff always liked last season when he had an opportunity to get some time. Very often it would be subbing for uh, Nick as one of the uh, starters and he always was somebody that uh, you guys had great faith in in terms of doing the right thing when he would get on the floor, but he would be out there with guys that were more established scorers. But now we see kind of the full blossoming of Alan Crabb's game, and he's taken things to a new level, and his confidence seems to be a great thing too. And whether he has started, whether he's come off the bench, uh, again, he seems to be delivering in whatever you guys need him to do. Oh, yeah, he's been amazing. And, again, we talk about preparation, and Alan has put his time in and worked extremely hard. 
Um, I mean, I, I, I take my hat off to those, to those three guys, three guys that just spoken about just him being able to work with them and watch them grow and watch watch the, the time and the effort that they put into their craft and into learning the game and into uh, becoming the type of players that they are now as, as well as the type of players that they will be in the future because they continue to work just as hard. They continue to, you know, obviously have to be a little bit smarter because of the minutes that they play now, but they, they have really learned a lot. I think, uh, I think Wes Matthews played a part in, in those guys' development and then watching how hard he works along with, you know, the things that they brought to the table coming in and having their own own level of work ethic. But they understood early on that, you know, nothing was going to come easy and that they had to work the tail off. And Allen is one of those guys that he's been he's been prepared for this and he's gotten an opportunity and he's done nothing but take advantage of it because because he, he because of that preparation, because of the things that he's done as as far as working his tail off in the gym. Um, you know, it's it's these things are for us and, and for myself, at least, I know I look at those guys and I expect expect them to, to hit the ground running and be able to do some of the things that they've been able to do. Lastly, Coach, Utah tomorrow night. Uh, Damian has said many times that he reminds everybody of how close the club is to uh, being in the top eight in the Western Conference. Utah is in that eight spot right now. Do you as a staff talk much about it or do you think it's too early to even be looking at the standings? Well, I mean, we have looked periodically obviously we pay attention to the standings we pay attention to the things going on around the league it's not something that we focus upon obviously we want to continue to grow we want to continue to get better as a team we want to continue to get these individuals to a level of playoff basketball playoff level uh, team teammates and the, you know the fact that the better opportunity that we have in doing that the better off things will be as it comes down to it. I mean, things generally take care of themselves, but we have to take everything game by game. Utah happens to be in the A spot, and that, that is a barometer for us. So it's something that's realistic is obviously a realistic goal, uh, and it's, it's something that we have to have, have to take with a, with a grain of salt when it comes to standings right now because, you know, fortunately for us right now, the playoffs don't start tomorrow. Um, we're in a position where we, we take care of business. We continue to grow continue to get better continue to win games and we'll be you know in, in the hunt when it comes down to it so we just have to take care of business tomorrow and, and approach the utah game as you know as if it's a game against another good team in the nba coach thank you for the time uh, congratulations on all the hard work to get to the halfway point of the season which will come up tomorrow and hopefully some uh, even better things in store for the second half we'll see you at the building tomorrow night thanks fellas appreciate it 